Shalom everybody, welcome to Alma Center, uh, Sunday, 5th of July. Hope you uh, managed to celebrate and enjoy uh, 4th of July. Uh, we heard that yesterday there were two explosions in Tehran, definitely not uh, 4th of July firecrackers. And we were trying to make sense of the situation and hope we can uh, help you uh, do the same. So, Sarit, can you help us just make sense of what happened in the past uh, week or so in Tehran? In Iran, altogether. First, a statement. Something new is happening. Something new is happening in the conflict between Iran and, I don't know, the West. It could be United States, it could be Israel, it could be Saudi Arabia, I don't know who else. Something different is happening. In the past week, we had three explosions with high profile that everybody could see. The first one was east to Tehran in a place that was used for the PGM, Precision Guided Missiles. The second one was uh, in a TANS, in a, in a nuclear site for the centrifuge. And the third one was in the southern part of Iran, in, by the way, the Arabian area of Iran, where you have another uh, nuclear site and a power plant that may be supplying uh, power for a nuclear site over there. Uh, there are a few more, but I'm not sure they are connected, so I just want to focus on these three. So we know about, uh, you know, many explanations varying from, uh, uh, like you said, all five, uh, many attacks, or everything's a conspiracy and it's Iranian infrastructure. But we'll follow your, uh, your estimate, three explosions, why now? Well, something is happening in the nuclear program of Iran. We have seen this in the past uh, month and a half. And it started from the declaration of uh, the IAEA itself, the International Atomic uh, Energy Agency, that said clearly that Iran is violating the agreement, that, uh, that Iran enriches uranium, uranium to higher level than it should, and that Iran is not enabling uh, its uh, inspectors to get in, the inspector of uh, the IAEA to enter into the nuclear sites and to see what's going on over there. So we understand that something is clearly happening. And by, on the Iranian side, we've seen a, a foreign minister, Zarif, applying by the agreement uh, to activate an article that's uh, named uh, crisis management meaning that, or claiming that the Europeans are not fulfilling the agreement, blaming them that they are like surrounding to the uh, American pressure and uh, saying we want to get to a new process. All of that together bring us to the conclusion that something is happening there and maybe the Iranians are getting too close to a, a dangerous development. And that's why, to my understanding, somebody made, made a decision uh, to have an intensive gray zone campaign, a gray zone campaign. Gray zone campaign mean uh, what we Israelis call Mabam, or the, com the campaign between the wars. And the whole idea of that is to achieve what you want to achieve, doesn't matter what it is, uh, without but, lasting, without, without getting into war. How do you do that specifically in this issue? Uh, you follow very strictly with the policy of ambiguity. Meaning you never take responsibility or claim responsibility uh, to anything you do, while the other side itself is not really interested that you will claim responsibility because that way it will be committed to response. So the Iranians are not committed to response now because they never published who did that. And the one who did that also is uh, Netanyahu when he was asked about that in the press conference about the COVID-19 just uh, on Sunday, he said, of course I can't relate to that. Right, same uh, Benny Gantz, Minister of Defense. Uh, although he did put uh, the two threats one, uh, the terror proxy and terror uh, all over, Syria, Lebanon, Gaza, and the nuclear, but he said not, not, neither confirmed or, uh, or denied it was Israel, leaving deniability for, for everyone. Um, 
We do know that Israel was under attack, a cyber attack, um, in last May, uh, that apparently was based in Iran. Uh, is that where we're going towards? How will uh, Iran respond? Well, I think that it is quite um, probable that Iran will respond. Now, since we don't know who carried out the attacks, we don't know exactly against who Iran would respond. Well, they sort of pointed fingers in many ways. We have a few yeah. on the media we saw. So they pointed finger, uh, uh, not directly, but uh, yes, uh, in some of the websites of the IRGC, we've seen uh, a finger with the ring of Suleimani, like a very symbolic uh, finger and a very, very symbolic ring. Pointing at? Pointing at Dimona, pointing at uh, the south and mid part of Israel where uh, the nuclear plant in Dimona is. Uh, I don't know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It is something that the Iranians and Hezbollah uh, are following uh, for decades, so a cyber attack is definitely an option, or a cyber attack against a facility of the sword or a power plant or something like that is definitely an option, but we cannot overrule other options as well, uh, as? such as a, an attack on the borders. And we already published a piece before the attacks in Iran, we published a piece about the option of an attack on the Lebanese border since Hezbollah, is under a lot of pressure now uh, over there with the American sanctions and American sanctions against Syria. So there is a growing interest to Hezbollah to carry out a terrorist attack as well uh, on the border. The same, of course, uh, with the Syrian border. And of course, there is the, the option of uh, an attack outside of Israel against Israeli sites or Jewish sites. Uh, abroad. That we've seen more in the past. We've seen more in the past, so I don't know. All in all, it all depends on them, their capability to succeed. Now, there is a lot of pressure from inside Iran as well, which is important to mention, because uh, since there were a few explosions, the Iranians themselves now, each explosion that happens uh, due to uh, hurting uh, facilities and the, the infrastructure in Iran is not very good. Uh, is now connected to cyber attacks, or, right. so yeah. So maybe the, the you know in the eyes of the Iranians themselves, it's much more than just three attacks. But um, I guess uh, somebody is now working very hard to defend us as we speak. Think of from what's, what's of the next, the next move. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So I, I hope we made sense of what's going on. I sort of hope we won't be talking about this uh, again this week. That means that everything's all right. Oh, I hope we will, because that way somebody will manage to stop the Iranian nuclear program. Right. If it's worth it, it's worth it. Um, we hope to see you again next week. Sunday is the 12th of July. We mark uh, 14 years since uh, the beginning, the kidnapping of the soldiers on the border and the beginning of the 2006 war between Israel and Lebanon. So I'm pretty sure we'll be uh, working on that next week if nothing else happens. Well, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you then.